Then Nasuki surprised, Yuri shyly looks the other way before lifting her arm and doing the same thing yourself, loudly smacking her cheek. She turns <laughs> and stares into her lap as unable to hide a smile. That was a really funny joke. <laughs> I mean, I'm laughing at it. It's only been one day since Yuri's letter was delivered to Nasuki with Monica's help. Because Yuri chose not to attend the club meeting that day, she and Nasuki haven't faced each other since. Though it's only lunchtime, Yuri finds herself ex anxiously counting the hours until she'll need to face the outcome of her efforts, whether good or bad. And because the passing of five students was making her feel even more anxious, Yuri picked out the most secluded spot she could find to spend her lunch. Because of the staircases under maintenance, no student will have any reason for coming here. Such a relaxing feeling to have a moment of solitude in the meaning of a frantic school day. Unless they just meet each other. Eh. What are you doing here? Um, I, I just... Yuri grips her book with enough force to wrinkle the pages beneath the pressure of her thumbs. Well, what are you doing here? Uh, I just came to get a drink from the vending machine, which is right there in the back. The other one is out of the drink I like. Yuri notices Nasuki fishing with a few coins between her fingers. She nods, avoiding eye contact. Yeah, here in, at least here in Korea, I can't speak about this fake Japan, but there is a lot of coins with everything. Suki, also looking away, shuffles over to the vending machine. So quiet that every one of her movements seemed to reverberate through the entire stairwell. After far too long, she finally receives her beverage, which she then fidgets in with a piece of, of the coins. Some kind of iced tea. And saving right away, Nasuki just stands in place. She glances all around her. It's like way too quiet back here. It's creepy. I mean, that's not what I meant. I really, I mean, it's totally cool for you to work together. Like, I see how many... Blah, blah. <laughs> not because I think you're creepy or something. I didn't mean that either. And I'm just going to stop talking. It seems like a good idea. It's okay. Everything is okay. Yuri finds herself accepting some words of comfort after hearing Natsuki stammer herself in the dejection. Similarly, in response, Natsuki approaches the base of the staircase and hesitantly sits down herself next to Yuri. Well, I can leave if you want. Yuri shakes her head. Natsuki twists the cap of her drink and takes a sip. Despite receiving Yuri's general permission, Nasuki doesn't say anything more. Yuri continues to read, or at least pretends to. So they don't do anything? And the two just sit there for a long time. The tension seems to fade, but a little time... Oh, the tension seems to fade a little as time passes. Even without any words, it seems to mean at least something, though it's not clear what that way may be. Lunch ends more quickly than expected. Nasuki's the first to stand up with her empty drink bottle. Are you coming today? To the club? Yuri nods. I'm sorry for being so awkward. I'm really bad at talking about this stuff. I just can't for some reason. I don't know why. But I want to, eventually. There's no rush. I promise. Thanks. I was going to say, was that the end of it? It's the next day. Oh, gosh. Zuki appears from around the corner, steps up the vending machine, glancing at Zero as she does so. Wait, then we just... They didn't, they didn't talk at the club? Is that it? Well, I just came here to read this because there aren't many people around here. Oh, I thought you didn't like how quiet it was. Well, I don't, but there's no people here. I see. Suki sits down. Mood feels much different today than it did yesterday. After yesterday's lunch in the club meeting that followed, Suki and Yuri began to feel more relaxed around each other again. Although Yuri's letter is still lingering in the back of Suki's mind, she continued to tee tour around it. But it's okay that I'm here? Yeah, I don't care. I also just don't feel like dealing with the crap I get my friends about it. And I'm going to lower the music just slightly. It's blaring in my ear. Especially since, like, they all just assume I stopped reading manga after I joined the literature club. Not that I'm trying to hide it from exactly. But I just don't want it to come up again now that I've waited for so long for a new volume to come out. Literally months at this point. You don't have other friends who are into manga? Not unless online friends count. And Sayori, but that's different because she's not exactly into it. She just likes it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Honestly, you're lucky that the books you're into at least just looks like books, so you don't have to feel like everyone's constantly judging you about what you're reading. That would be awful, especially since I already hate attention so much. But it's a good thing I have thick skin, I guess. Do you, though? By the way, I would totally recommend finding some friends online if you haven't already, if you're like me and have no one to share your hobbies with. Oh, I have online friends. Since middle school, actually, I was especially desperate back then. Uh, okay. It's somewhat embarrassing to reminisce about those days. 
Sometimes I feel like the me from years ago would have benefited from a good smack across the face. Oh, come on. Oh, whatever. We're just stupid kids back then, anyway. Some of the fanfics I wrote, thank God I used a pseudonym. In other words, an avatar name. But I liked it at the time. I got a lot of fulfillment out of it. Plus, I can look back and say with confidence I've become a better person since then. So I don't think I would change anything. I wonder if in a few years from now we'll think the same thing about our current selves. Probably. That's probably the cutest music he's actually looked at me. Does it make you uncomfortable? No, of course not. I don't think any other people think of me, especially someone who doesn't even exist yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, why are getting worried about someone who doesn't exist? Hmm. Right here. So you can raise your hand to face and forcefully slaps your own cheek. That's me from the future coming to terms with me right now. <laughs> Just slap yourself in the face? Yeah, self-love is slapping yourself in the face. Okay. Well, I mean, sometimes... Okay, I, I, yeah, alright, you know what? I understand that. <laughs> but then in the Suki surprise, you're really shy, looks the other way before lifting your arm and doing the same thing yourself, loudly smacking your cheek. <laughs> and stares into her lap as unable to hide a smile. That was a really funny joke. <laughs> I mean, I'm laughing at it. That's what I'm talking about. I didn't know you got it in there. I, I don't even know why I did that. Yeah, I just thought it'd be funny. Sorry, I keep distracting you. You said you were looking forward to reading, but I'm just going on about this nonsense. How late do you get to your reading? Oh, right. Yeah, I guess I'll do that then. Conversation ends quickly and the Suki opens her book. Yeah, just slap each other in the face. They read silently for the remainder of lunch hour, but the whole time you refuse to strike by a twist of regret over having so much abruptly forced the end of their conversation. Music keeps cutting off in a way that makes me think this is ending. You're back. Yeah, I'm here to lay low again. Another day has passed. During lunchtime, Suki finds herself wandering to the stairwell once more. Hey, did you buy that? Suki quickly notices a bottle of iced tea in the staircase where she normally sits. Yuri nods, avoiding eye contact. What, like for me? But you didn't know I was coming here today. What if I didn't show up? Well, I just, I mean, I would have drank it myself, I guess. It was a stupid thing to do. No, it wasn't stupid. I wouldn't say it was stupid. I just thought, never mind. What I meant to say is thank you. And that's a really nice gesture. It's, it's okay if you don't feel that way. I do. It was the other things that, that I didn't mean. I swear, please believe me. Mm. Yuri pauses and nods. Talking is hard. I get it wrong a lot too. So I believe you. So he exhales in relief. She then sits down next to Yuri and takes the drink. Knowing Yuri, she was probably overthinking it so much that I uh, pressed too fast. What did it say? No, yeah, she's probably overthinking it so much that Nasuki's tepid response filled her with self-doubt. I'll do something nice for you next time. Please don't feel obligated. I want to. I want to do nice things too. Okay. Thank you. You can thank me after I figure out how to do something nice. You can get her all those cupcakes. I'll do it then too. Nasuki sighs. <laughs> hmm? Nothing. It just seems, reminds me how I've been able to get along with my friends lately. Is that why you've been coming here? Well, no, not exactly. I haven't been avoiding them on purpose or anything. They're just other things I'd rather be doing during lunch today. I like being around them when they're all just having fun, but they also can't take anything seriously. So when I'm, I don't know, feeling serious, their attitudes just get on my nerves. It's only gotten worse ever since I joined the literature club. How come? I don't know. It feels like I'm being used. It. I feel like I used to be really good with just putting up with it because it would be so stupid to so, cause drama over a joke I didn't like or something. But I just have a hard time doing that lately. But it's my fault for being overly sensitive. If I have a problem, I'm not going to demand for everyone around me to change. But, yeah, I know. Monica and Sarah didn't really, really agree with that kind of thing. But they're not in my position, so it's easier for them to say that you should just communicate your feelings or whatever. It's not like my friend group does that kind of thing. I would just be making an embarrassment of myself. Sorry, none of this has to do with you. I don't even know why I'm talking about it. It's okay, because you're venting. That's why. I like listening. What? Listening to other people's problems? Yes. That's weird. Sorry, I just like learning about people. Do you think it's weird? No, 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 that's not weird. I probably just understood. I don't know, does that mean I should keep going? If you'd like. Okay. Well, I don't know what to talk about now. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll talk about it. Okay, what do I talk about now? <laughs> what are some things you like to talk about with your friends? A lot of things. I mean, they're really fun to hang out with, like after school and on the weekends. And they really, really like my baking. It's just fun to complain about school together. They make me laugh a lot, and we have a lot of good memories and inside jokes. Oh, I'm bad at those things. So, 
Are those all things uh, important to you? Well, kind of, but they're not really things that need to get out of everybody. Everyone in the club is really different from that, but I'm still friends with them, too. Well, see, Ori really likes your baking, and she makes you laugh, and she complains a lot. Sorry, complains a lot? That doesn't mean she's anything like my other friends. Well, unlike them, she's a nice person who cares about your feelings. Excuse me? How about you don't talk about that way about my friends you don't know anything about? Suki stands up. No, wait. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. I didn't want to say something bad. Please don't leave. I mean, but she has a point, though. I mean, Zuri does care. Do your friends really care? Suki sighs and shakes her head. It's fine. As long as you understand that you can't just judge people like that. Suki. <laughs> how, 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 how... Anyway. I'm sorry. Suki sits back down. You can't just compare friends like that and, like, measure who's better than who. Everyone's different. I'm sorry. I just... I just don't like people who want to hurt you. Long silence stretches between them. Yuri, you showing vulnerability? They don't want to hurt me. We're just like you tease each other about stupid things. It's fun. Well, you say that, but how often do they really do that, though? I don't like that. Well, that's why I'm friends with them, and you're not. You like it? Just don't worry so much about me. It's not worth it. Who says it's not worth it? I'm sorry. I wish I knew how to help with social conflicts. Like how Monica can. She's good at these things. Monica would say she's terrible at these things. <laughs> Not really. Also, I don't really want help. Sometimes it's just stuff I have to deal with myself. That's what Monica and Ciara never seem to understand. Sometimes all you have to do is look at them wrong and they're all like, Oh, what's wrong? Is everything okay? I just want to mind my own business sometimes and decide for myself I want to talk about things. The only one who understands that is you. So you really shouldn't be hard on yourself. You're not as bad as you think. Oh, you don't need to reassure me or anything. I mean that. Plus, it makes sense that someone who doesn't talk a lot would make a good listener. Thank you. <laughs> you are also nice. That was delayed. It's really hard for me. It doesn't come naturally at all. It's so weird because I hate the thought of myself as someone who could just say whatever's on my mind. Oh, I always thought of someone who was going to say something, whatever's on my mind. I feel like the only one only works when I'm annoyed or upset or I want to say something mean. Why am I like that? You don't have to answer that. I'm just talking to myself. Yuri nods and remains silent. Suki so notices her fidgeting with the pages of her book. How come you like reading so much? Oh, um, well, a lot of reasons. But I just get sucked into it so easily. It's so immersive, like I want to be a part of it. I think there are a lot of things about people in real life that make me feel uncomfortable and frustrated. Especially when it comes to following social conventions and group interactions. I just really don't understand it. I have no real desire to participate. But it's different with books. It always feels like I want to be around the characters. I feel like I saw such a strong emotional connection with them in ways that I've never felt with real people. So in that way, it can sometimes feel more real than real life. But it's not real life. Really? Is that hard for you to be around people, like, all the time? Mm, fairly often, especially in group settings. When people are making all kinds of conversations, saying jokes and all that, I don't know what to do, and I just disengage. Oh. That doesn't get lonely? I don't think so. I still enjoy... Well, you do, Yuri, that's the thing. I can still enjoy spending time with people one-on-one, -on -one, and I have um, online friends too, of course, but that's not the same. Do you, ever, do you ever wish that you could be friends with those characters in your books? All the time. Sometimes so badly it makes my heart ache. Uh, come on. Yeah, me too. Really? Mm-hmm. A lot. So you do have problems with your friends, huh? Like, more than anything. And Rizuki mutters that silence fills the stairwell once more. But it's a mutual silence, one full of understanding. Oh, that was the end of it. Oh. Well, that was quick. All right. Well, that was self-love part one. So I guess we'll be getting into self-love part two. So come back and watch when we finish off the... Almost the last one, because I know that technically there's one after this. So thank you for watching part one, and we'll see you in part two. Bye.